Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Cast. I'm with Leanne Marie, who is a systems professional for photographers, really. And she's based, she's a photographer as well. And a photographer based in Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And right. a fine photographer to be to, to add to that. I've just seen her portfolio online and it's phenomenal. Um, but I think what intrigued uh, me in terms of wanting to talk to you, Leanne, is really your idea behind how to create systems for photographers uh, and how it's helped. I've heard you speak about this uh, at a pug meeting here in Connecticut, and I wanted to, to talk to you a little bit more about how creating those systems helps photographers and why, why, why should one have a system to begin with. So welcome to the show. Thank you. It's <laughs> nice to be here. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about how you got in, interested in systems and why it's important for photographers. Okay. Well, I, um, I don't originally come from a photography background, I'm not formally trained as a photographer. I'm one of the photographers that picked up things as I went along and kind of taught myself. Um, the background that I do come from is a background in industrial engineering. So I went to the University oh. of Pittsburgh for industrial engineering. Um, after that, I went and worked for FedEx Ground. So I was in the field for a couple of years um, doing a lot of process improvement um, projects and really coming up with ways that I could um, work within my company and work on class projects and working at FedEx to improve things um, within the company and within the different projects that I was working on. So a lot of my background in industrial engineering really is process based. Um, So whenever I started my photography business, I knew first, yes, I needed to learn how to take great pictures. Um, But setting up the business side of things, it was important that I really establish great systems from the get-go so that I knew what to tell my clients. I knew when things needed to get done. I could keep things very consistent. Um, And that really helped me to deliver a great product, which then helped to build my business going forward. So those systems have been changed and modified over time a little bit, um, but they're always something that's really the backbone of what I do. Okay. Well, tell, tell me about, uh, you know, obviously uh, from, a, from a photographer's perspective, uh, who came from a, a purely journalism slash art background, uh, the business side of it always was secondary to me. And to get into a, a, a sort of a methodology where everything was systematic and in a step with one follows the other kind of thing was always sort of hard for me. Uh, now, obviously, you're dealing with different personalities when you coach. How do you go about making sure that a person like me, for instance, would, I guess, learn to create mm-hmm. the systems and create a business for themselves that is sustainable? Right. Um, I think sometimes what we struggle with from an artistic standpoint is that as artists, we want to create something that's different and unique and very individual for everybody. So we almost might feel like creating systems is against Mm -hmm. that part of what we want to do. But really, creating the systems takes the thought out of the kind of junky part of what we don't like to do as artists Mm -hmm. and frees us up to be able to do the things that we really love to do. So you don't lose that individual um, creative aspect to what you do um, by implementing systems in your business. It actually frees you up to do some of those things even more. So that's kind of what I try to tell my coaching clients whenever I work with them. Um, especially if they're very, very artistic and really not drawn to the business side of things, is that setting up those processes is really going to free you up to actually do the stuff that you really love to do. Um, It's just getting those things set in place that nobody really wants to do. Um, But once you get it done, really, you can cross it off your list and then you don't have to worry about it nearly as much anymore. So um, it is helpful in that way. So is that what you do for uh, a photographer who's, who's starting out? Uh, or is it, some, is it usually you're working with somebody who's already been in business for a while and is just sort of spinning their wheels and going, ah, I'm going crazy. I can't get anything done because 
you know, I'm an artist and I want to go out and make pictures and I don't want to be emailing my clients at 11 o'clock at night, you know. Uh, who do you yeah. work with the most? Are you working with somebody who's starting out or someone who's est so-called established uh, and just sort of trying to, I guess, find their footing back again in the business? Usually it's more newer photographers on the scene, um, but I do work with photographers that have been doing their business for a while. I find that um, each camp struggles with something different. The new photographers struggle with, well, I want to get systems set up, but I haven't even figured out what works for me yet. Where the established photographers say, I need to get systems set up for myself, but but I don't really want to change it. Right. So, um, Every, I, I understand that there's that spectrum, too, of, you know, the new photographers might need some guidance on, here's some really great practices, here's some new techniques that might really work for you, whereas if you've been in business for a while, you have to be um, really open-minded to the idea of setting things in stone or even making some changes in your business so that you can move forward. Um, but, yeah, I would find that most of the uh, photographers that I've worked with have been, um, more photographers that are setting things up, but like I said, I've kind of been working with either side of the spectrum just in different ways. You have a family, you have a business, which is a photo-based business, and you're also coaching. Clearly, you know, you're juggling quite a bit. And mm -hmm. so when I look at you, I'm going, how did you do it? Well, clearly the answer is you've created systems making it possible for you to, to jump from coach to photographer to mom to wife to all these things that you do um i guess my question then is uh what is your first i mean what what are what where are your first steps in in parsing that because if someone were to be were to give me those options i'd be like ah oh, i don't where do i begin you know mm -hmm. what would your answer be to someone who says i want to start but I, I don't know where to start Right. Um, I think that the big thing with how I'm able to juggle all of the different stuff that I do is by having those systems in place, like really knowing exactly how I approach every one of my weddings, um, every one of my engagement sessions, um, every one of my coaching clients. Knowing how I do that, that, that allows me to have a big picture, but then break it out into small pieces so that on a given day, I can be a mom and then I can go and I can run some errands and then I can do um, some blogging and then I can kind of break it up into smaller, more manageable chunking, chunks. chunking. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then that way I know that everything's going to get done right. when it needs to get done, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. It doesn't feel like, oh, I have this whole wedding that I need to do. So I gotcha. need eight hours to sit down and do it. No, I just need to kind of break it out into different pieces of the day. Right. So. Where can one go to uh, sign up for your coaching? Uh, is it a workshop or is it sort of like a systemized 12-week process that one can sign up for? What exactly do you offer? Um, what I do is I usually do Skype calls ah, um, okay. with people to go over a lot of what they do. And I do like screen sharing to kind of get a view for things. Um, I also do email consultations. So that is, works really well for me and tends to work really well for everybody else too. Um, where like I'll do pricing consultations or systems consultations back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, and then that way you have the whole email where you can refer to it at any point in time, which is great. Um, and for me to communicate that way, it works out really well too. So usually it's um, via Skype or via email, and then they can just get in touch with me through my website, which, which is, is leanmariephotography.com. Okay, wonderful. So, mm -hmm. um, one of the things I've noticed uh, recently is that you are – uh, you credit shoot.edit for a lot of how you do things. Um, as a photographer, as a busy photographer, a wedding photographer, um, I'm assuming you send all your files to shoot.edit and they do their magic and send, their, send you the, the, the finished files or the processed files. Uh, mm -hmm. what, how, how has that relationship worked for you in terms of uh, your business and why, why shoot.edit? Well... I started outsourcing my edits, so my color correction, um, let's see, at this point it was December of 2011, so I don't even know how many, whatever many years that is, three years ago or something, um, and I decided that I was just sitting in front of my computer too much, and I'm not trained 
in editing or color correction, so it's really not my forte anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I, what I decided to do is I had two weddings back to back, one on a Friday, one on a Saturday. And I decided to send those out to two different companies for a test run because they were in December, so I had some more free time because it wasn't smack in the middle of my wedding season. Sure. Um, so I sent them out to two different companies, shoot.edit being one of them, and I waited to get them back and take a look at what the files looked like um, and I figured whatever images look best are the ones that I'll go with. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, whenever I sent those two weddings out, what I didn't expect was that shoot.edit was really good about communicating with me too and setting expectations on when I could expect things. Um, and that became really important to me as well. And I was like, I don't even know what's going on with my other job, but shoot.edit is telling me everything I need to know. So once I got them back, I loved the images from mm -hmm. them as well. And to me, it just was a natural pairing. Wanting to know where where things were in the process and having a great result was just what sold me on it. Um, since then, I've sent out everything to shoot.edit. I'm on their unlimited plan. So I send them all my weddings and engagement sessions. And that allows me to not be in front of my computer doing color correction. Um, once I get the files back, I do go through and do a little bit customization just for my style to mm -hmm. add that extra oomph mm -hmm. that's, that's characteristic to me. Um, but everything's really consistent. It's really well done. And I just don't have to worry about it nearly as much anymore. I know I shot a wedding um, 10 days ago, and I just delivered it to my client today and blogged it today. Wow. And everything's done. So, um, I mean, I, couldn't, I could never have done that with all the other stuff that I do if I didn't outsource to them. So you are a fairly uh, big proponent of outsourcing, I would imagine, because that's part of your yeah. system. You know, you'd say, you know, whatever you're not really comfortable or not eager to do on your own, send it off to somebody else and then bring, that, bring those costs in to your, your, your clients. I mean, you pass it on to your clients, I imagine, right? Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I definitely plan for it mm -hmm. um, in terms of the cost. Mm -hmm. And for me, the even the stress of not even having to think about it and the time that it frees up mm -hmm. is absolutely worth every single penny. So. Now, you're, you're such a big fan of Shoot.edit that you're actually, you know, you're doing a webinar with them in the next couple of weeks, I imagine. Uh, tell me a little bit about what that webinar is going to be all about because I'm going to sign up for it right now. Okay. Um, yeah. So the webinar is going to be next week. It's going to be on June 11th. Um, and what we're going to talk about are the 15 kind of secrets that I've come up with to being really efficient and having great workflows. And those aren't just outsource your images. Um, I have lots of different tips for managing your emails and managing your workflows and even little tips on managing life in general and kind of how you can mix those things together. So I'm going to go through those 15 tips and um, hopefully there'll be little things that you can take. And even if you implement one mm -hmm. going forward, it'll help you a lot. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll be a great time. I look forward to to as well because, you know, nice. it's one of those things that uh, I'm in transition right now. So and I think it'll be something that I'm going to get a lot out of. Uh, so thank you so much. Nice. So, Leanne, I appreciate the time, and I look forward to seeing you online again on June 11th. So Sounds good. Thank you. Take care, Leanne. Bye. Bye.